Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted that there will be many Dajjals. In an authentic hadith reported in Musa Imam Ahmad and other books, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and there is a version of it in Sahih Muslim, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there shall be after me, listen to this, 30 Dajjals. All of them kathab. Everyone is claiming that he is a Nabi and there is no Nabi after me. What do we learn from this hadith? It's not just one Dajjal. There are many, we can call them in English, Dajjal with a small d. Or we can say mini Dajjals, no problem. But there is one Dajjal with a big d, okay? Or the major Dajjal. So there are many mini Dajjals. Talathun in one hadith, 30. What is the sign of these false Dajjal? Everyone says the same claim. I am Nabi, I am Nabi, I am Nabi. And the Prophet said, وَأَنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي From this we learn a principle, my dear brothers and sisters. Anybody who claims he is a Nabi, he is in fact what? A Dajjal. Is that clear? Anybody who claims he is a Nabi, you can call him a title. And that title is, you are a Dajjal. A Dajjal. As for the Dajjal, that will be the last of them. The 30th of them. That is the big Dajjal. That is the worst of them. And before that time, there will be plenty of mini Dajjals. But we are now interested in the big Dajjal, the final Dajjal. And there are, before we get to the ahadith about Dajjal, there are two interesting aspects that are found in hadith literature that confuse the average reader and in fact they even confuse some of the sahaba so they still remain elements of confusion about the issue of the jal the first of them was that there was an individual who lived at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whom even the Prophet ﷺ for a period of time didn't know is he that the jal or is he a minor the jal okay he didn't know and this incident is mentioned in Sahih Muslim and many books of hadith. It is an authentic incident. Multiple narrations exist about a certain young man who lived in Medina, who was from one of the Yahudi tribes. And he was a sorcerer. He had a alaqa, a connection with the jinn. He would call the jinn. And he was a magician. And he would pretend he knew the future. And he would foretell the future. You know, in English, we call them a soothsayer. He would foretell the future. And in our religion, anybody who pretends to know the future is a liar. And in our religion, anybody who invokes the jinn and calls out to the jinn, this is a magician. We don't call out to the jinn. We don't do anything for the jinn. And perhaps in another lecture, I'll talk about this reality of how mankind has a relationship with the jinn, which is a very scary and interesting and deep topic. And all of our men and women love talking about the issue of jinn. Jinn stories are swapped at night when the hours become in the wee hours of the night. It becomes common to swap ancient jinn stories. And inshallah, one day I'll give an academic lecture. What is all of this? Is there something called jinn? Is there something called magic? And inshallah, we'll explain at that stage. For now, realize that it is possible for evil people to invoke the jinn. It is possible. And when they do so, this is what we call magic. And that's why magic is haram. It is always haram to invoke the jinn because they are wanting nothing but evil. Whoever does so must sacrifice tawheed and get involved in shirk because the payments that jinns accept, evil jinns, because you have good jinns as well, the payments that jinns accept is what? Do you think they will accept your American Express? Do they care about dollars and cents? What is the currency you will give the jinn? Your worship. That's the only thing the jinn wants. The jinn doesn't care about your credit score. He doesn't care about your credit cards and your money. What will the jinn do with credit cards and money? What does the jinn want? The same thing he wanted, Iblis wanted, that ana khayrum min. I am better than this creation. Let this creation bow down to me. Let this creation worship me. And if the jinn gets this, in return, the jinn will do some favors for you, right? We'll go and tell you something that whatever. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. So there was this magician at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu by the name of Safi Ibn Sayyad. That was his name. 
Safi ibn Sayyad. And some say his name was Abdullah ibn Sayyad, but his name was Safi. Safi ibn Sayyad. And he was from one of the Yahudi tribes who remained living in Medina for a number of years. Not all of the Jewish tribes were expelled. Some small families remain. And he was from of those tribes that lived on the outskirts of Medina. And when our Prophet migrated to Medina, Safi ibn Sayyad was a young child and he was about to reach puberty. And that's when, and so he's around 13 years old. And that's when our Prophet begins interacting with him. And there are a number of interesting narrations about uh, Safi ibn Sayyad. Of them is that uh, the Prophet wasallam heard that there is this young child who has these visions of the jinn, he predicts the future. And so Umar and the Prophet ﷺ, this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, they walked towards a group of children who were playing and amongst them was Safi ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was not aware that the Prophet ﷺ was coming until he was right behind him. And Ibn Sayyad turned around and the Prophet ﷺ was there. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Ibn Sayyad, do you testify that I am Rasulullah, do you testify I am Rasulullah Wasallam? And Ibn Sayyad said, I testify that you are the Rasul of the Ummiyeen in a derogatory manner. You are the Rasul of the unlettered people. You're not Rasul to me, you're Rasul to the unlettered folk. So the Ibn Sayyad then said to the Prophet Wasallam, and he's 12, 13 years old, look, he said, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? What did we say? One of the signs of a Dajjal is what? Dajjal claims he is Rasul, right? So he is now saying, and look at the arrogance. And this also shows you that this is what happens when you start getting involved in, in magic. You really become a very evil person. How dare in front of the face of the process and you are twisting the question and you're saying, okay, you ask me now, let me ask you, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Amantu Billahi wa Rasulihi. I believe in Allah and His Messenger. That was his response. And he said to Ibn Sayyad, what do you see? What do you see? What visions come to you? Ibn Sayyad said, I see two people come to me. One of them tells the truth, one of them tells lies. The Prophet ﷺ said, rather, the matter has been made confusing for you, meaning both of them are telling lies. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, I have a test for you. I have hidden something for you. And what was that thing that he was hiding? He was hiding a verse from the Quran, which is, فَارْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ had recited this verse to the Sahaba. And he's saying, I'm holding, I'm testing Ibn Sayyad. He says he knows ilm al ghaib He says he knows everything. Okay, I just recited this verse. Let's see, does he know did I recite this verse or not? You see the test, right? And by the way, any person who charges you $5 an hour to predict the future is betraying his own lies when he's forced to charge you $5 to predict the future. If he knew the future, he would be investing in Bitcoin and the stock market and become multimillionaire instantaneously. The fact that he has to charge you $5 to read your hand, the fact that you have to call in $3.99 per minute to predict the future indicates what a liar that person is. Is that clear what I'm saying, right? So the process is testing. This is a man, he is claiming he knows ilm al ghaib He knows everything. Okay, I just recited a verse 20 feet away from him. Let's see whether he can tell his followers what I just recited to all of you. Simple test, right? فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ He had recited to Umar bin Khattab. Now he goes to Ibn Sayyad and he says to Ibn Sayyad, I have a test for you. Do you know what it is? Do you know what I have hidden for you? And this shows you, Ibn Sayyad did have contact with the jinn, but the jinn are not all knowledgeable. All he could say was duh, duh, duh. And the verse was فَرْتَقِبْ فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِسْمَا بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ And the jinn narrated two letters duh, 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 and not the whole verse. You see that, right? So there was some jinn that was communicating with Ibn Sayyad and he wasn't able to do it. So the Prophet said اِخْسَ يَا عَدُوَ اللَّهِ And اِخْسَ literally translates as shut up. It is a harsh word. Ikhsa, the English word is shut up. And the Prophet was never harsh except to those who deserved it.
Shut up, O enemy of Allah. You shall never go beyond your meagerness. You think you are so big, you're never going to go beyond.